the fact that Madara might be returning alone already makes me a little bit happy with this chapter. Starting off, we're learning a little bit more as to why Naruto and Sasuke continuously were going after Kaguya in that manner. It seems as though once they combine their hands, it'll seal away Kaguya, and that's why they've been doing it this entire time. And that's why Black Setsu and Kaguya separated Naruto and Sasuke, so that way they wouldn't be able to do this because this is their ultimate goal to, you know, seal her away for good, or that's probably one of her fears as well. And just how fucking strong is Kaguya if she can literally control everything within the dimension? It almost seems as though they're in some sort of fucking super genjutsu, except they're not. They're actually in completely different dimensions, and that's why Obito's gonna try to drag, you know, himself into her dimension. But just seeing that she can control everything around, especially when Naruto is standing there, she's controlling like all the ice and everything and attacking him with it. It's like, yeah, she's definitely, and to a certain degree, at the very least, deserving of the role of like mother of all things. Because my gosh, if she can control everything inside of this dimension, then how do you fuck with? somebody like that. Although I will say I really want at some given point for Kaguya to start talking a little bit or you know just acting a little bit more like the main person instead of fucking Black Setsu constantly running his mouth like mama we need to do this like shut the fuck up let mama talk. I'm glad at the very least that Kakashi and Sakura are like yo we're, everyone here is ready to die for this shit and Sakura is trying her best to say you know we can at least help somewhat so they're at the very least trying to have some sort of relative uh, role within all this because at the end of the day as of right now the only ones that really can do anything and they acknowledge it at the very least is Naruto Sasuke and at this point Obito somewhat you know to somewhat extent but Kakashi and Sakura they're, they're just there for moral support at this point to be honest with you I think Kishi just wanted to have them there because he didn't want to just have only Naruto and Sasuke and maybe Obito there because it would just feel a little stale after some given point because who knows how long this fight is gonna last so I think honestly Kakashi and Sakura are mainly there for dialogue purposes because otherwise again what can they really do I mean Sakura is gonna try and be a little bit helpful with this whole Obito situation but at the end of the day that just kind of seemed a little bit like a plot device like I need this much chocolate so I can go there so you and you will be enough it's like yeah I, I guess he's giving them some sort of roles now the shit with Madara at first I was like okay so his legs are around now it's making me wonder uh, and I have a lot of questions like is Madara still alive did she take over half of his body and like it's just like warping it into a different dimension so it's a possibility that Madara isn't dead and I like that you know the Hokages are kind of questioning it like well if we do find out that he's dead then we can revive him that's making me believe that Madara isn't dead and what happened is maybe she came out of a different dimension and took over half of his body to go into a different dimension like she's using half of his body but in actuality Madara is still alive and let's just say um she came back to this dimension she could possibly restore Madara I don't think at this particular point that Madara is dead yet judging from how things are like you know the speculation like well is he dead is he not I think Kishimoto has him there as a purpose because he's not dead and oh gosh I just really hope he comes back and I hope he doesn't come back on some Obito shit please don't come back and say oh man you know I'm ready to fight the good fight like he's been doing things his own way so if he indeed does come back please no hero shit just be the Madara Uchiha that you've been and overall it's just seeing that though it just gives me hopes like yes Madara isn't done yet yes and it's a good thing actually that the infinite Tsukuyomi is that strong that even if you get them out of the branches they won't wake up because at this particular point it's been drummed up so much I mean if it was that simple that you know you just rip them out of there and they wake up it would seem like so the infinite Tsukuyomi isn't that strong so it makes sense for it to be that strong that you can rip them out of there and they're still incapacitated and the branches are coming so I like that it's that strong and it's showing that it's a credible thing it's you know beyond control at this point the only way to stop it I'd imagine is to either get the caster or get to the root of the problem I swear my jokes are some of the worst but then I was like what the fuck is going on when Haguromo appeared in front of the Hokage after coming out of Madara's legs it was like fucking Madara's legs were the dragon balls and Haguromo was Shenron I'm sorry that just kind of looked a little bit stupid I was like what the fuck is going on and if Haguromo could come out this entire time then why didn't he come out sooner and stop Madara from doing all these things or something it's like why is he there? Is it because of the power that Madara has obtained recently? The sage power that he's able to be summoned? So many different questions and just overall it kind of just seems like 
what the fuck? And also with him being summoned, is he gonna try to give them all some Sage Chakra and that's the way they're gonna stop it? Is he gonna do like what he did for Naruto and Sasuke with giving them that Sage of Six Paths power? He's gonna say, okay, all of you Hokage, you're all Sage of Six Path Hokage now. It's like, overkill. Either that or he's gonna try to tell them how to stop the Infinite Tsukuyomi, which still seems fucking weird. Like, so the dude came out of Madara's legs, it's like... <laughs> but I am interested to hear what he has to say, and overall, it's progressing that aspect of it, even though it just seems fucking ridiculous. Well, we got to see what Sasuke is up to, he's pretty much just sweating his balls off. And I'm curious, is Kaguya popping into that dimension because he said, I can't do it, I've tried everything, nothing's working, so is Kaguya popping into that dimension and fucking with him as well, or does she just leave him in a different dimension and it's like, ah, fuck him, leave him there? Because I'd imagine she'd still be messing with him because she wants to kill him, she wants all the chakra to come back to her. And the more and more things progress within the storyline i'm honestly starting to notice that really everything for the most part goes back to just this mother and son struggle i think maybe this is subliminally kishimoto has always had some inner problems with his family maybe he's always had conflict with his mother or something and he's representing it with this because Hagoromo being summoned yet again this time from madara's legs to help defeat his mother it definitely is showing that there was a huge conflict between the two at the very least and this is starting to once again show that like this is the root of everything. The whole world has constantly been ratified by this fight between mother and children, you know, with the reincarnations and everything of that nature. That's what it all stems from. Stems from Senju Tree. No. And even Kaguya basically being one with nature, again, that goes back to the whole Senju tree stuff, and it makes me wonder the origins of Kaguya and what led her to become what she is, and the fact that she can kind of just be immersed into everything within nature, it questions her abilities as well, like, Kaguya, one of the things at this particular point that is stopping her from me saying, oh my fucking god, is she needs some epic dialogue, she needs to talk, like, that's really the only thing that is stopping me from being, like, really hype about her, because she clearly is capable of fucking with them and she's throwing one in the dimension and fucking with him there and coming in the other and attacking him with ice so really if she would just talk is she like a mute like why isn't she dialoguing that's what i would like more of anything not too much not to the point where like Madara was telling yes when i was five years old my nuts it's like no not that to that extent but at the very least you know talk i understand what kishimoto's doing with the obito character and at this particular point this is probably ever since he's been you know revealed to be obito this is one of the best characterizations we got of him this huge turnaround this development and everything but i just feel uncomfortable with hearing naruto thanking obito i mean i guess you got to show him the right way the right path blah 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 but just to thank him at the end of the day you got to look at it all of this stems from, yes, I know, the joke continues. All of this stems from, really, Obito's bullshit, you know, in one way or another. Not everything entirely, but a lot of the problem that they're dealing with right now is because of his bullshit. And it's like, I wouldn't thank this motherfucker for a goddamn thing. It's like, at the very least, you could be doing this shit. You should be doing this shit, helping out. Like, why would I thank you for fucking putting me in this crisis right now but at the very least i did feel it was a good thing for the character and ultimately it's somewhat not entirely but somewhat adding some good traits to him with him saying you know what i found my way i ain't gonna be hokage none of that is happening i've realized now i'm stopping the bullshit I just want to lead in front of you and die. And I felt that that was the best thing we've gotten from the character since chapter like 600 or whatever in a sense. As far as his characterization and who he is today, this is the best that Obito has been in the past, what would that be, 80 something chapters? And it just gave good purpose because at the end of the day, I'm still kind of like he should fucking be dead. He should have been dead a long ass time ago, but if Kishimoto is going to keep him around, then... At the very least, make his character seem a little bit more appealing, and that ending kind of gave a little bit more of a good factor to the character, where I'm just kind of like, eh, he's around, he's, uh, eh, he's alright. And overall, with this chapter, for the most part, we learned a little bit more about Kaguya's powers, we have some progression as far as the Hokage side of thing, the Madara leg shit seems weird as fuck, and it's kind of like... Madara's alive, hell's fucking year, or he might be alive at the very least. He's coming back, hopefully, at some given point. Either, you know, as an Edo Tensei zombie, they're gonna revive him, or whatever the case may be. But Madara might return soon, so that's fucking awesome. But Hagoromo being summoned out of his legs, like Shenron. And the whole Obito situation, if he's gonna be alive, at the very least, his character seems 
all right at this particular point as far as he's like fuck it i'm gonna be a martyr at this point so why not and ultimately good chapter on the progression side it just feels so strange with the haganomo leg stuff but aside from that it feels like you know at least it's moving things along and kaguya we're getting to learn a little bit more about our powers just fucking talk bitch but let me know what you thought of this chapter what do you think regarding haganomo being summoned from madara's legs do you think madara is going to indeed return at some given point in the story and if so do you think he's going to be on the side of good the side of bad Will he be the ultimate villain again? What do you think is going to happen with Madara? And how did you feel about Obito's character turnaround at this particular point? Do you think that it's slightly redeeming him in any which way? I like, at the very least, that it's making him seem slightly more likable than he's been, you know, again, in the past, like, 80 chapters, as far as from him being this straight-up whiny dick to now saying, I'm gonna be a martyr, so I can respect, at the very least, that aspect of it. And just overall thoughts of the chapter, I felt like it was a good one for the most part. It had some slight progression and stuff, so I'm gonna give this one 7 out of 10. Just the hog it almost shit. It's like, how? Why? What's going on? But that's all I have for this review. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked anything I had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, you can do so as well. That'd be awesome. I'm for that world. And as always, people, have an awesome day.